This is super important. Last time I did it, we got caught in a fisherman's net and we were stuck out there for like... <laughs> Oh you will go there and you'll be completely shocked. Cash is king. king. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Joannis or Joe Hatagua. I'm a Sierra Leonean American living in West Africa. I'm in Sierra Leone right now and I'm here with Mariana Forbes. Hi everyone. And so today we are going to do the top 10 things we wish we knew before coming to Sierra Leone. I think if you are coming to visit, then these are the things that you need to know. So we're not going to count them down in any particular order. We're just going to say the 10 things that we wish we knew. And I hope that you find it helpful. So check it out. All right, number 10 is the airport. This is super important. Sierra Leone's airport is in an area of Sierra Leone called Lungue. Lungue is on a peninsula. It takes about three hours to drive from the airport all the way around to Freetown. So most people take water transportation across. People used to take helicopters, it's not as popular anymore. Uh, so there are two companies called Seabird and Seacoach. Uh, they take you to two separate areas in town, but you can take those, it's about 45 minutes. It's a boat that seats about 40 people or so. And so you can take that across. And so that's what I usually take. And so it takes about 45 minutes, depending on the time of day or night. Give yourself maybe an hour before you get to mainland. Uh, last time I did it, we got caught in a fisherman's net and we were stuck out there for like, <laughs> we were stuck what out the there for like, if you get motion sickness, then you definitely want to bring whatever pills you take to help you with that because you're going to need it. It gets a little, the water gets a little choppy, especially during the rainy season. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that's the important thing to know about the transportation from the airport to mainland Freetown. Just be prepared for people looking to try to help grab your bags and help you to get to Sea Coach. That's a service, a tipping service, so they're expecting to be tipped. Exactly. So if you're going to allow them to help you, just make sure you have cash. And just to add to that as well, yeah. so just be very open-minded yeah. and just know you are safe, you know, carry cash with you, whether it's leones or dollars or pounds, and be prepared to give it to people because if they help you, they want you to give them money for helping them. So be prepared for that. Sea coach is 40 dollars $40 or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So four hundred thousand Leones about forty dollars. Uh, so you want to make sure you have the cash to pay that or you can just pay cash mm. in the US or whatever country you're from. Oh and if you have a Sierra Leone passport that line is always faster. So I encourage you to get your dual citizenships. You can basically skip the, the other line. It's basically Sierra Leone passports and all others. Mm. So that's another tip that I would give. Okay, moving on at number nine, cash is king. king. I can't just use my phone and do contactless payment. I can't just do a bank transfer because it's not really much of a popular thing here, I sure. would say. Right. It's not as implemented as it is maybe in the UK or US. Right. So literally, it's cash everywhere. How much would you say people should carry with them in a day, every single day? So you should have at least 400,000 Leones yeah. in your pocket, and that's about 40 bucks. 40 bucks. If you have an Echo Bank card, that usually does not work with any of the POS machines for whatever whatever reason. The POS means point of sale, so it's those little machines like usually at a cash register or something that you use in the card. Those things use like mobile data, right? So they can go down a lot, and especially the Echo Bank ones for whatever reason. So I would definitely recommend carrying another type of card, mostly visas, and usually you'll be fine at those places, but everywhere else, almost everywhere else requires cash. Okay, so this is number eight. eight. And we are on ATMs. So the yeah. ATMs here only allow you to take out $40 at a time or 400,000 Leones at a time. So let's imagine you want to take out <laughs> 500,000 Leones. That is 10 transactions. Wow. So if you want to take out 5,000 Leones, that's about 10 to 11 or so transactions, right? You put your card in and it gives you back every time. So you, it's a new charge every time. Some ATMs still charge you every time, but they keep your card in the system. But you have to have a lot of patience. So when you're at an ATM and you're waiting <laughs> for other people, you know that they're doing the same thing. Put the card in, putting their amount in, putting their pin in, take it back out, do it again. You gotta make sure you have time available for being at the ATM. It might take you 20 minutes or so to, pull, to completely pull out as much as you want to. Yeah. Now we're on to number seven. For me, this one is very important. Like 
it's very yes, very yes. important because as a woman i love my clothes sure i love my shoes mm -hmm. i don't want nothing to happen to them but one thing you need to know when you're coming here is the dust if you're just going from car to car then you're fine right. but if you are planning to actually like walk about and you're going to take a long journey by road i would say just don't do it if you're taking public transport or if you're driving in a car where you keep the windows open don't worry yeah. if you're going to have your windows up all the time you have your ac on then you should be fine if you're just going yeah. car to location, location to car. As Mariama just said, on one and another pro tip I would say is you could just wear your undershirt and then change into a white shirt later. So maybe yeah. you keep it in your bag, but then of course you might have to worry about wrinkles and things like that. So yeah, Sierra Leone, especially if you're gonna ride with your windows open, don't worry. Now on to number six. Apartments and Airbnbs and houses overall, the prices are much higher and much more expensive than you would think for the GDP here. What I understand from, from doing small online research, the average person in Sierra Leone makes about 50 to 70 US dollars a month in terms of income. But I've looked at houses, the Atlantic Dream Atlantic Villas, looked at the God Godrich houses, and they range anywhere from 400,000 to a million dollars. So the Dream Atlantic Villa houses where, uh, these are pre-made houses, they're in a gated community, they have like security at the gates 24 hours a day, but I still don't think they should be a million dollars. And then when you look at Airbnbs and, and short-term stay apartments, I... All right, so here's what Airbnb looks like in Freetown, right? So right now, what's available is 113 different stays, which is actually a pretty good amount. So Airbnb in Freetown is actually pretty, um, pretty big, right? It's, and it's growing. Now you can see there's some stuff that's forty dollars a night, some stuff that's twenties in the twenties, some stuffs in the fifties, right? But you know, there's very few super hosts, right? So um, now what I did was I choose I chose the entire place, some place, so something that says the entire place. Um, now as you just scroll down, you can see what some of these prices are. So if you just to give you some context, right? If it's thirty dollars a night, it's about nine hundred dollars for the month, right? So thirty dollars a night times 30 days, it's $900 a month, right? If you're looking at something that is $68 per month, right? Now this might be a nice place, but we're talking about a price of, you know, $2,040 for this entire place, right? This is a two bedroom villa. This is a $2,040 uh, house to stay in, in Sierra Leone, right? In Freetown. I have looked at some short-term stays for three bedrooms. They're about, you have to put a thousand dollar deposit down and then maybe 1500 or so per month. That's basically 2,500 for a three bedroom. But there are cheaper places to stay. But if you're looking online, most of the places you're gonna find are pretty expensive. The apartments that you might rent, you are getting quality, right? You'll get AC, you'll get electricity, exactly. you'll, you'll get a generator. Mm -hmm. All the things that you're used to in the West, you will get there. I and mean, that's why they charge that much because yeah. the whole thing is like, we're, we're giving, giving you, you all your same. comforts. So coming in at number five, this one is annoying. Oh yeah. Because you know what it is? One thing I love about Sierra Leone is the community. Absolutely. You know, people are still loving and caring. However, it can get invas invasive. To yes, the okay. point where people just randomly, they don't call you, they don't notify you, they don't tell you nothing, they just, bam, appear in your house and they will make themselves themselves super duper comfortable in your house, by the way. They're gonna expect you to cook them food or serve them food. They want to follow you wherever it is you're going to and that's just the culture here. And sometimes yeah. for people like us who come from Western area where people are very much like, to themselves mm -hmm. you can sort of, you can sort of feel like i need space like just yes just, just yeah. you know at least give me a call or a text and let me know that you're coming yeah so absolutely important to be prepared for unexpected visitors because it's gonna happen moving on to number four in general when you have a foreign accent most of the time people are going to go with higher prices for you, right? So in Sierra Leone though, the benefit that I have is that I've been working on my Creole, which is our pidgin, right? It's kind of like an offshoot of English. And so it's called Creole, K-R-I-O. And if you negotiate in Creole, it helps a little bit more because it, it ingratiates you with the local <laughs> I really, culture. No, no. Yeah, so no, like. No, I agree with you. Yeah. It's true. If you use Creole, then what they're 
him a bit more lenient, but they're still adding price. Oh, because yeah, they right. can tell your accent is not as fluent, your Creo, but because they see you're trying to be a little bit lean, but you're still not paying the price right. that those who live here are paying. So. Right, exactly. So for instance, I went to Big Market and I bought a shirt, right? And we were negotiating for a while and they wanted me to basically pay, I don't know, like $35, $40, right? And I was like, there's no way I'm paying $35 to $40 for this shirt. It was really like a $10 shirt. What I did was I just showed them that I only had 100,000 Leones. Like this is all I have. So this is all I can give you and that's all I can do or I have to walk away. And so of course they agreed and I bought the shirt for 100,000 Leones. We are at number three guys. And this one we've already mentioned it but I think it's very important to mention it again. Yeah. And it's people forcing help in order to get a tip. So obviously we mentioned the airport and people you know going out of their way to help you so you can get a tip. But another one is just in general, people will come and help you if they see you carrying a bag that looks too heavy. Whatever it may be, they'll come and help you so they can get a tip. So just remember, if anybody's going to come to you, they want a tip. So yeah, the parking lots is probably a big place where that happens. Anytime anyone has the opportunity so to help you with directions. So like, if you, let's say, so like the other day I went to the CID, I can't remember what it stands for, but I was getting a police clearance. <laughs> and when I went there, there was a guy who worked there full time and I needed to go get a passport photo, right? And so he's like, I'll just go away on that, right? So, but like, that wasn't a very good description. So I was like, oh, I don't know, where? Like, where exactly should I be going, right? So then he's like, oh, that was me. So then we had to follow him. And so now we're following him and he walks us over there. So then of course he expected a tip. So be prepared to give money for a tip. A 5,000 Leones is fine. Um, you don't have to go too hard. I mean, it's about 50 cents, but you can give 5,000 Leones. If you're feeling really generous, somebody does something that you actually appreciate, you can do 10 or 20,000 Leones. Yeah, but um, just, just keep in mind that it's gonna happen. Number two. So we're gonna talk about mosquito nets in this one. This is a really important one, especially if you're staying somewhere that's not like one of the hotels on the beach. You stay at a family house. What you'll notice here is that there are a lot of hooks in ceilings, depending on when the house was built, where maybe there might be a ceiling fan in some other countries like Ghana. Here, there's a hook above the bed, or even in the US, usually it's like, a, out, like a, a light fixture. Yeah. But here, there are hooks. That is for a mosquito. And even if you have a screen door in, mosquitoes find their way in. They always find their way in. So, if you want to sleep and sleep Peacefully, soundly and peacefully, peacefully without hearing that zzz, zzz. <laughs> anyway if you do hear it and you're in a mosquito night it's like you got a force field so you feel <laughs> You feel fine? Definitely get a mosquito net. And there are a bunch of places here you can get mosquito nets. I'll put some places where I would recommend in the description, but I would recommend getting a mosquito net for sure. So right. we have the last one. Number, Number one. one. Which we both agree is the most important thing for safety wise. Yeah. And also as well as maneuvering yourself around Sierra Leone and really having the full experience. And number one, number one is making sure that you have someone that you trust. Yeah, I would say that's that's the biggest thing is that you'll notice that most people come through referrals, right? So, for instance, I have two people that I use for different things. So, my driver slash caretaker, the person who lives on my property, you guys might have heard me mention it before. He handles everything related to like running errands, very basic things, right? Like yeah. if I need him to go get me some water or you know, from like, like to get like a bunch of water, right? Like to get, or if I need him to drive me somewhere, just the basic things, right? He does all those things. But I have another guy who's very well connected. So he's the guy I use for like, if I need to go to immigration or if I need to get my business license to get my business set up, to open my bank account, he was the guy that I worked with to do all of that. You know, you kind of want to have people with different skill sets because you never know what you're going to need to, to have done. But as long as you have someone in general who's local, they can be your proxy here for all the things that you need done. And they'll help you navigate through things, right? Because exactly. things here work differently than they do elsewhere, right? Like a lot of people expect like little tips here or there, like even at government offices, it's just, it is what it is, right? Anybody who's stamping something or writing their name on something, 
they'll kind of ask you for something and you should know how much you should give. And the person that you know locally kind of understands the local culture and can tell you, exactly. all right, you should give this much for the tip or don't tip at all because it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's super important to have that. And I don't think I would have gotten my dual citizenship. I would have opened my bank account or I would have started my business without having the proxy that I had here. So yeah, those are the top 10 things. Super important that you follow these things to a T because if you don't, you will run into the same issues that I did when I first came. Now that I have this information, I've been able to move around a lot more easily through the country and I definitely think that you will be too if you do these things. If you like what you've seen here today, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Also, when you subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time another video comes out. Mariana, where can people find you online? So you can find me on YouTube. My YouTube name is Mariam Forbes and that's for all of my social media. So yeah, go ahead and follow me on YouTube. Follow my journey. So I'm new here in Sierra Leone and I'm just showing you guys how it's like me reconnecting and exploring my motherland. So go ahead and follow me and follow my journey as well. So with that, Thank you, Mariana, for doing this. So we'll see you guys all in the next video. All right, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, like, comment, and share it with your friends. All right, see you on the next video.